Hey everyone, and welcome to another XAM tutorial. Today, I want to show you a few easy tips and tricks, on how you can adjust the strength of the aim assist. This can become very important because a lot of games don't offer the option to customize the aim assist in their game options. In the following video, I will show you 6 different ways to either increase, or reduce the aim assist that you experience with your XM. In order to adjust the aim assist, we have to look at how the aim assist works and operates first. A game can use several forms of aim assist, the most common 4 ones are the following. Bullet Magnetism Bullet magnetism will drag your bullets directly towards the target, even if your aim is off. You can aim a few millimeters next to the target and you will still hit it. Some Overwatch characters such as Hanzo with his arrows use the same assist, the Halo Master Chief Collection also has bullet magnetism. Aim Slowdown Aim Slowdown will reduce your mouse sensitivity once you are near, or on the target. This should increase your tracking capabilities, and ensure that your aim remains perfect, even if the target is moving. Example games are Overwatch and Fortnite. Sticky Target This is the most popular console aim assist. Once you are on target, your crosshair will stick to the opponent for as long as your aim is roughly following the target. Pretty much every modern console game is using this method, Call of Duty and Fortnite are two examples. Target Lock Target Lock is basically the definition of an aim bot, when the user presses a certain button. The game will automatically move the crosshair on the target if it is in range. In console games this is typically used for aim down sights, or weapons with a zoom functionality. For example Battlefield 1 and Fortnite have this feature when you zoom in with a weapon. If you want to know more about the other aim assist forms, then check out the video description. I have added a link to a scientific research paper on different aim assist methods and their overall effectiveness in games. Now that you know about the four most popular aim assist implementations, I am sure you can think of quite some games in which you have experienced those. Games often use not only one, but several aim assist forms. For example, Battlefield 1 is using aim slowdown, sticky target, and target lock. This means that when you want to increase, or reduce the aim assist, you always have to think of what kind of aim assist methods your game is using. But let's get back to the actual topic of this video. The concept to strengthen, or lower the aim assist is the following. If your mouse movements appear to be closer to those of an analog stick, then this will increase the aim assist. If your XM aim inputs become less analog stick-like, then this will reduce the aim assist. The reason for this is that the aim assist algorithm is made for analog stick movements, it will scan your console inputs and analyze them. If the parameters to grant aim assist are given, the aim assist will activate for as long as the incoming parameters are matching the requirement conditions. So now that we have a rough understanding on how the aim assist works, let's look at the first option on how to adjust the aim assist, which is your mouse DPI. Very high DPI values usually have a lot of micro stutter. These micro stutters will confuse the aim assist, and either turn it off, or reduce its strength. High DPI values start at around 5000 DPI onwards. If you want to reduce the aim assist by quite a lot, then consider to use something like 10,000 DPI or more. Low to medium DPI values will increase the aim assist because the mouse is scanning your mouse pad with a lower resolution, and therefore the actual mouse movement packages become larger. Here you can see an example picture of medium and high DPI values, and how they affect your mouse movements. Lower DPI values allow for a much cleaner horizontal movement, which makes your mouse movement appear more like an analog stick to the aim assist algorithm. Low to medium DPI values start at around 800 to 4000, I highly recommend you to not go below 3000 DPI though. If you want to know why. Then check out my XM DPI tutorial video that I have linked in the video description below. In this video I also explain why higher DPI movements usually have jitter and stutter. The second option on how to adjust the aim assist is the XM synchronization feature. If your XM is on the latest firmware, then you can find this feature in your configuration options when the expert mode is active. 
With the synchronization option set to off, you can reduce the aim assist a little bit. Similar to high DPI values, your mouse movements will become a little bit choppy, which will for example allow you to break into, or out of the aim assist bubble more easily. The stutter is hardly noticeable, even with slow mouse movements. With synchronization common, or slow, you will increase the aim assist. Your mouse movements will now contain almost no jitter at all. Slow will increase the aim assist even more than common does, but it reduces the quality of the mouse movements a bit too much in certain games in my opinion. The reason is that slow is intended to be used in games with 30 frames per second, and therefore gives less accurate mouse movements in 60 FPS games. In my opinion common is the best synchronization setting. The synchronization option default, is the way to go if you do not want to change your aim assist behavior too much, it is basically the middle between off, and common. It is also the synchronization type that XM4 used, so if you prefer the way XM4 handled the aim assist, then go with default. Also, if you want to test hold XM4 game configurations with your XM Apex, then make sure to put synchronization to default, this way you can make sure the old XM4 config is working, and feeling the same way with your XM Apex than when compared to XM4. The third option on how to adjust the aim assist is to change your gaming hardware. The strength of the aim assist is not only determined by your aim, but also how you move your character in the game. And the best way to make your character movements look like analog stick movements is, of course, to use an analog stick. Playing with an analog stick to move around in-game will give you a lot more aim assist, than when using a regular keyboard, with its WASD digital activation movement. This is one of the best ways to increase the aim assist by quite a lot. For example, you can use devices like the Sony Navigation Controller, which you can see here. It can even communicate wireless with your XM Apex or XM4. If you do not like nunchucks, such as the Sony Navigation Controller, then you can also consider devices like the Logitech G13. It is a keyboard analog stick hybrid, and offers a lot more buttons. For those of you that prefer a keyboard to move in-game, you can keep an eye on the so-called analog keyboards. For example, the company Wooting is offering keyboards that will measure the distance you press your keyboard buttons into the keyboard and adjust the activation percentage of the key accordingly. Here you can see an example picture. With a keyboard like this, your WASD movement inputs will become a lot closer to those of an analog stick, which means it will increase the strength of the aim assist. Analog keyboard support is something that might be added to the XM in the future, chances are, that by the time you watch this video, these keyboards might already work. I have added a topic that discusses the compatibility progress in the video description down below. The fourth option on how to adjust the aim assist is to use a ballistic curve. The look mechanics of games usually utilize a lot of acceleration, which is something that the XM completely removes thanks to the smart translators. To get more, or less aim assist, we will now use the ballistic curve to reintroduce some acceleration in certain mouse speed areas. First. We look at how to increase the aim assist with a ballistic curve. This can usually be done by drawing a curve that lies below the linear default graph. This will in general reduce our mouse sensitivity, and will work similar to the aim slowdown mechanic of an aim assist. A curve like this will for example do the following. In the first third of the curve we are below the linear graph, that means the mouse movements are slowed down for precision and micro movements. When we are on target or close to the target, we will not irritate the aim assist by doing minimal correction movements that are too abrupt and fast. In the second third of the curve we are following the linear graph. This means in this mouse movement area we have no acceleration, and our aim is perfectly precise. Moderate mouse speeds are usually used to correct the aim, or to switch between targets. Therefore, in this graph area, we do not want any additional aim assist as it would just hinder, and penalize the aim accuracy. In the last third of the curve we are below the linear graph again. This will slightly reduce the maximum turn speed, but in return, you are less likely to break out of the aim assist bubble when doing very fast mouse movements. 
This is very beneficial for close combat aiming. You can find the copy and paste code of this curve in the video description if you want to give it a try. Now let's look at a curve that will reduce the aim assist. Here you can see a curve that is basically completely above the linear default graph. The curve is also parallel to the linear default graph, which means your aim will not suffer from acceleration. Instead, this curve will add a starting boost to all your mouse movements. You will get more boost the higher you set the curve above the linear default graph. This boost will basically make your starting mouse movement jump a bit. Your micro movements are less accurate with this, but in return you will almost completely cancel out the aim assist. The aim jump, thanks to this boost, is too abrupt for the aim assist and therefore lets you break out of the aim assist bubble very easily. I have added the copy and paste code for this curve in the video description too. There are a lot more ballistic curves that will increase or remove the aim assist. To get the most out of a curve it's also best to customize it for every game that you play, as different games use different aim assist methods. For example, a Call of Duty ballistic curve might not work that well with Battlefield. I will cover more of those in a dedicated ballistic curve tutorial video soon. In the XM form you can also find a lot of these curves, such as the RML ballistic curve that I have linked in the video description below. The fifth option on how to adjust the aim assist is to change the XEM smoothing value. If your XEM is on the latest firmware, then you can find this feature in your configuration options when the expert mode is active. Smoothing is meant to reduce mouse jitter, and stutter. This stutter will reduce, or even break the aim assist. With smoothing you can get rid of this jitter. In general, the more smoothing you use, the stronger your aim assist will become. However, I would not recommend going higher than 10, to 15 smoothing, as your mouse movements will start to become inaccurate and mushy. Also, it plays a big role if your micro mouse movements, already stutter with zero smoothing or not. If your mouse movements have a jitter with zero smoothing, then the overall aim assist gain of the XM smoothing feature will be much lower, than when your mouse has no jitter. I will cover this topic in the future with a dedicated video on how to remove mouse stutter with your XM. The sixth and last option on how to adjust the aim assist is to change the polling rate. You can adjust your XM polling rate in your global settings. Just change the polling rate there, hit the save button in the bottom right, and restart your XM. Similar to the mouse DPI, and the XM synchronization feature, your mouse and XM polling rate will change the input package size. The lower your polling rate, the more movements your mouse and XM will accumulate before it sends those to the console. This is a bit of a natural smoothing, lower polling rates tend to increase the aim assist, while higher polling rates will reduce it. The effect is a lot lower than with the actual XM smoothing feature though, which is why I recommend to not go below 500 Hz. Next to that there is also the chance that your mouse might not provide a steady polling rate, for example, your XM is set to 1000 Hz but your mouse can only perform 950, to 990 Hz. This will cause a lot of micro stutter, that will reduce the aim assist quite a lot. I will upload a video about polling rates soon, it will help you to find out how well your mouse is working with certain polling rates and what the overall best polling rate for your mouse, and your XM is. If you have any questions about the XM, or the aim assist, just ask in the comments down below. If you liked this video, hit the like button or even subscribe to this channel. Also let me know if you would like to see more of these tutorials in the comments down below, and I will maybe see you in the next one. Until then, enjoy your XM experience.